The Grumman F-6 F Hellcat was an American carrier-based fighter aircraft. It was designed to replace the F-4F Wildcat, which had been the main fighter of the US Navy since its introduction in late 1940. The objective was to create a faster, more agile and better armed fighter while keeping the Wildcat's famous ruggedness. The first prototype flew on the 26th of June 1942 bearing a Wright R2600 Cyclone engine that could develop in excess of 1700 horsepower. Close relation with Wildcat pilots and the finding of an intact Zero fighter on the island of Accutan in Alaska allowed the development team to analyze the performance of Wildcat fighters against Japanese Zeros. This led to a change in power plant adopting the Pratt & Whitney R2810 double wasp that could develop 2000 horsepower. This new prototype flew on the 30th of July 1942 and the change in power plant gave a 25% performance increase. The Hellcat started being delivered in January 1943, but would only see action later that year on the 1st of September. Three months later, on the 4th of December, the Hellcat saw its first major action in a strike against Japanese-held Kwajalein Atoll. 91 Hellcats faced off against 50 A6M Zeros, resulting in 28 Japanese fighters down to the loss of only two Hellcats. These incredible numbers were only the beginning, and from late 1943 until the end of the war, the Hellcat was present and dominated all major air battles of the Pacific. Another example was the Battle of the Philippine Sea, recognized as the largest carrier-to-carrier -carrier battle in history. It took place on June 19 and 20 of 1944 and was a deadly blow to the Japanese carrier fleet. The Japanese lost more than 550 aircraft, while the US Navy lost only 123, with 80 of those due to fuel starvation. A big part of the toll was claimed by Hellcats. Americans called the aerial part of this battle the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot, due to its one-sidedness. Toward the end of 1944, its superiority had become so absolute and omnipresent that it was called the Big Blue Blanket a blanket that smothered the Imperial Japanese Navy. During the war, US Navy Hellcats performed 66,530 missions, earned an unbelievable kill ratio of 19 to 1, with 5,163 claimed kills to only 270 losses due to aerial combat. Of all 6,477 Japanese aircraft shot down by carrier-based aircraft, the Hellcat was responsible for 4,947, about 75% of the total. It also dropped 6,503 tons of bombs. It was also the aircraft responsible for the largest number of American aces, 305 in total. It was a war-winning aircraft and recognition didn't come only from American voices. Japanese aces Sadamu Komachi and Saburo Sakai both praised the American fighter. Komachi admitted that the Hellcat was both faster and more powerful than the Zero, while Saburo stated that it was the best American fighter and reported that when he faced it for the first time during the Battle of Iwo Jima, he was completely taken by surprise. It also saw action in Europe as a total of 1,263 served in Britain's Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm. It was present in battles over Norway, the Mediterranean and Asia. It was responsible for 52 victories, a much more sober number than in the Pacific. More than 12,000 Hellcats were produced in little more than two years, and in mid-1944 the production peaked at more than 20 per day, an astonishing number and part of its success. The F-6F Hellcat might not have been the fastest, most agile or the most heavily armed of American fighters, but in the Pacific was probably the single most significant fighter. The Hellcat was known as the aluminum tank. It could endure 20mm cannon impacts and had 212 pounds of armor protecting the pilot. Its 650 cal M2 Browning machine guns with 400 rounds per gun were more than enough to shred Japanese aircraft to pieces. It could also carry a large payload of ground attack weapons. The Pratt & Whitney R2800 Double Wasp was a very good engine that offered the Hellcat considerably more power than anything in Japan's arsenal at the time of introduction. It was also used on other famous aircraft like the P-47 Thunderbolt and the F-4U Corsair. It's very hard to find weaknesses on such a successful aircraft like the Hellcat, 
all these flaws were minor. The Hellcat never received a bubble canopy, its visibility was reduced to the rear. Hellcat operational units never had a turbocharged engine. There were studies and even a prototype, but it was never adopted. As most air battles in the Pacific were fought at middle to low altitudes, this absence rarely affected the American plane. The 334 square feet of wing area made the Hellcat one of the largest mass-produced single-engine fighters of the Second World War. It also had a very large cross-section, making it a big target. The Hellcat had six mass-produced variants. The main two versions that we'll cover are the F6F3 and the F6F5. The 3E and the 3N were night fighter versions. The 5N was also a night fighter, while the 5P was a photo aircraft. The F6F3 was the first operational version of the Hellcat. It had 650 cal M2 Browning machine guns. Most F3s had the 2000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2810 double WASP engine. Despite this, the last units were equipped with the more potent 10W version that was standard on the F5. Later production F3s were able to carry up to 1000 pounds in bombs and 6.5-inch high-velocity aircraft rockets. The F6F5 production started in April 1944 and added several improvements to the design. It used the improved R2810W engine that could produce 2200 horsepower. It could carry up to 4,000 pounds in bombs in later units. There was also the possibility to carry two 11.75 inches Tiny Team rockets or six 5 inches HVARs. There was also the less common possibility of carrying a Mark 13 3 torpedo. Late production models traded two 50 cal machine guns for two 20 mm AN M2 cannons. In this section we will compare the Hellcat F6F3 against the Japanese A6M3 Mod 22. Hellcat kill ratio against the Zero was as high as 13 to 1. Still, a huge number of factors could contribute to this, like pilot training experience and morale, tactics in use, organization, superiority in numbers and so on. This comparison is only of the machines themselves, as the practical result was already covered. The time frame is late 1943 when the Hellcat reached the front lines. The A6M was more maneuverable at lower speeds while the Hellcat was at higher. When the Hellcat was close to the stall speed, the Zero was at its best. But by this time, American pilots knew not to dogfight a Zero at low speeds, therefore negating the Japanese plane's strongest feature. The Hellcat had by far the most potent engine of the two. The American fighter's advantage in speed was also quite considerable. Range was always an excellent feature of the Japanese plane. A small win here by the Hellcat. While the A6M was a fragile aircraft, the F6F was a beast, and the difference in resilience in between the two was quite large. The Hellcat's armament could easily shoot down the A6M, while the other way around, only the 20mm cannons were effective. The F6F could also take much more payload. There is some unfairness in this comparison, as the Japanese Zero was a 1940 aircraft while the Hellcat entered service three years later, and this is a lifetime in World War II technology. Still, the reality was that the A6M was by far the most common Japanese naval fighter when the Hellcat entered service. One of the main objectives in the Hellcat's creation was to shut down the Zero, and that it did. 24th of October 1944. This was the opening date of what later became known as the Battle of Late Gulf. Commander David McCampbell was already the US Navy's leading ace and had been warned by his superiors that his loss in combat would be a serious blow to morale. But on this day, all pilots were necessary to defend the task force from an incoming Japanese raid, and McCampbell insisted he flew. He took off from the USS Essex in near record time, leading the last seven Hellcats of the VF-15. 
the raid was intercepted about 20 miles from the task force and Hellcat pilots were presented with the most favorable conditions possible, according to McCampbell himself. The group of seven aircraft led by the American ace stopped the enemy raid to the point that no single enemy aircraft got through. They ended the day with a tally of 27 aircraft confirmed destroyed plus 8 probable, while receiving only minor damage mostly from debris let loose by Japanese planes. Of that combined tally, McCampbell was credited with 9 kills and 2 probable. He ended the war with a total of 34 aerial victories and still is the US Navy's all-time leading ace. At the end of the war, immediately after McCampbell in the list of highest scoring US Navy pilots was Cecil Elwood Ares. Born in Falkton, South Dakota, he enlisted on March 26, 1941. He was present during Operation Torch in North Africa, but his first two victories were achieved flying the Wildcat during the Solomon Island campaign. He would wait more than a year for his next victory, which came on the 13th of September 1944, when he shot down four zeros in a single day, becoming an ace in the process. Success ramped up and before the end of November he had achieved his final tally of 24 victories. It is stated that during this period his Hellcat was never hit by a single bullet. He was awarded the Navy Cross, the second highest military decoration in the US Navy. He was recalled to serve during the Korean War, ultimately retiring in 1967. Cecil met a tragic end after being arrested for DUI and committing suicide in his cell on the day of his 65th birthday. The Hellcat wasn't the best fighter of the war in any specific characteristic. But it was very good all around, had very few flaws and it remained effective until the end of the war with only a few changes. In the Pacific it was a game changer. After its entry into service, things were never the same and it was one of the main culprits in breaking the Japanese Imperial Navy's back. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like, subscribing and pressing the notification button. It would help me a lot. There will be plenty more videos to come.